Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today we are here once again in the wonderful land of RIS to bring you another unit roster guide and showcase for version 0.6. And today we are with Rhodes. Yes, Rhodes, that island nation. I have actually played a little bit of Rhodes in my own time, and it's quite fun. It is a good, fun nation to play, and it is quite difficult. Uh, for many, many people. So, a great nation to bring to you today, guys. And first things first, guys, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, like 70% of the people who watch my videos, please do. We are on the road to 2,300 subscribers. And thank you to everyone for the continued support on this series and the whole channel in general. Now, without further ado, guys, let's talk about the history of this roster. And you're going to be wondering, you know, it's not the biggest roster, unlike some of the rosters we've seen. And that is mainly because they're not a huge influence uh, in terms of the mainland of Greece and Anatolia. But navally, they, these guys are going to be very good. So, you know, the power in Rhodes comes from its navy primarily, rather than the land units that you are going to be using. But without further ado, guys, let's talk about the history of Rhodes. The roster. Once again, a fantastic historical note from Mouselos, so thank you to him. And without further ado, let's talk about the history of this roster. Rhodes was a trade republic that flourished in the Hellenistic Age, with a strong fleet to protect trade routes and the island of Rhodes, of course. It took the task very seriously and accordingly fought Byzantion to keep the commerce into the Black Sea open and supported Sinope on the southern coast of the Black Sea against Pontos, both in the late 3rd century BC when it did this fighting. And of course, remember guys, that both Byzantium, Sinope and Lycia, which we'll mention in a second, will be minor factions in 0.6, so you will actually be able to fight these guys and recreate these wars, which I just think is so cool. Little was known about the Rhodian army, of course, because the navy was the thing that fronted them. The navy was the power that they had. But, of course, they successfully fought alongside Rome and Pergamon in the Roman-Macedonian Wars and gained a small empire in Lycia and Caria after the Roman victory over the Seleucids at Magnesia in 190 or 189 BC. However, when, the Rome, when Rhodes offered negotiations between Macedon and Rome during the Third Roman-Macedonian War, it was punished. Yes, punished by the Romans. Very unlike the Romans to punish anyone that used to be their ally. But yep, um, they were punished by the Romans and they lost their status as the main free port in the Aegean to Delos. Yet, it remained an independent city into imperial times. Its special units, of course, are the Epibarti, which we'll go over in a little bit. The Marines, the pride of Rhodes. Otherwise, the roster is pretty standard Greek roster, but future mechanics are definitely going to expand the naval possibilities that Rhodes will have. So, if you want to, uh, you know, play a nation that is navally very strong, but maybe land quite weak, then this is the nation for you. So, without further ado, guys, let's get into the unit roster. And let's start, not with the Greek Peltas, but the Greek Slingers. We've seen these boys many, many times before with their bum bags on the way to a festival. Uh, anyway, a festival in the UK. Not Maybe not a festival in the US, but yeah, they look like they're on the way to a festival in the UK. I've seen many people dressed like this. No, I'm, I'm joking. Uh, the bum bags, though, yeah. Plenty of people wearing those bum bags. No one knows what's inside the bum bag. But anyway, um, let's talk about the morale. Three morale, seven defense, one armor, six defense skill, uh, melee attack of four. And we've gone over these guys many times before. So there's not too much I need to say about them. But the fact that you don't really want to take these guys over the Greek archers, depending on your situation, like we've said, the Greek archers are just better in, in a lot of ways. And the missile attack of six is two more than the Greek Slingers, which, in my opinion, is a huge difference, and the Greek Archers will definitely do more damage in a shorter-term battle. When you're talking the Greek Slingers over 
being able to fire every single one of their missiles, then maybe they'll do a little bit more damage, but not so much more. Not so much more that it's probably worth taking the Greek archers, because how many battles do those Greek archers actually fire? 25 arrows. Not many. Not many. So, as I say, you want to get these guys on walls, all that sort of thing. Never get them in melee, because they will just die and run away with that three morale. But let's move on to the Greek archers. And here they are, the boys. A lot of purples in this roster, as we can see. Pinks and purples to match the uh, colours of the, uh, uh, the banners. So, very nice. Nine defence, these guys. One armour. So, they've got one defence against missiles. And I'm assuming it's that sun hat there, you know. Arrows bouncing off that as they uh, run into the enemy. Four morale, five melee attack, and six missile attack with a missile range of 130. So not long range, of course. We've seen these guys many times before, like I've said. And always archers, you know, they're always solid. I, I don't think you should ever, you know, you can miss out archers in an army if you really want to. But remember, you just got to get up close and personal. The thing is with archers... Especially in RIS. You know, in an open field battle, they don't do so much because of... In general, we'll talk about the Hellenistic, you know, area. Because, you know, the battle generally gets to melee quite quickly. But if you're fighting, say, Parthia, you're fighting a horse archer faction, these guys are invaluable. And if you're defending walls or assaulting a city, these guys are so useful. So, so useful then I think it's always worth to just have about four archers in your army. And these guys, we've seen them many times before, solid archer unit. Got to do okay through the game, especially when you get a bit of experience onto those boys. So let's have a look at the Akontistai, the standard javelin men. We've seen these guys many times before as well. Looking very nice indeed. Very fancy with the, uh, the stripes there. Very nice. Six morale, 12 defense, one armor again, so they will die to missiles very quickly. With a defense skill of 11. Melee attack of a pitiful 6. Not quite a uh, strong melee attack for these boys. But they'll do fine. And a missile attack of 9. Char uh, not charging. Firing their javis into the enemy with 7 javis. So if you like javelin troops. I'm not going to go on about how much I dislike them. <laughs> Although I just mentioned it. Uh, but yeah. The Akontistai. Uh, if you like javi troops. Solid. You're going to do some decent damage with these javi Boyos. Now let's have a look at the Rhodian Slingers. So they actually have their own unique version of the Greek Slingers. And these guys, definitely something you want to consider taking for two main reasons rather than the archers or the other Slingers. Firstly, some amazing, amazing little wording here that is fantastic for anyone who's ever played a Total War game. Armor piercing primary weapon. So that is their slings. Armor piercing weaponry, guys, with the slingers. That is absolutely fantastic. They are going to do so much more damage than any other missile unit you have uh, access to. And with a six missile attack, which is the same as the archers, these guys, you're going to want to take them as soon as you can rather than your Greek archers, like we've said before. And they also have a bit better stats anyway, for morale and 13 defense, rather than, you know, the, uh, the f uh, sorry, 5 morale, rather than the 4 morale, and 13 defense, rather than the 9 defense. And most of that, they have the same armor and the same defense skill, but they've got a 4 shield with their little shields over here, looking very nice. This guy's getting ready, getting ready to fire his missiles but very nice indeed six missile attack 28 ammo and 160 missile range as well so they have long range missiles guys as well so these guys are a very very decent missile unit probably the best slinger we've seen in the game so far and i love that i love that Rhodes gets these guys you're going to be piercing through everyone's armor very nicely. And these guys are going to do some serious damage in those siege assaults and the siege defenses. So I really would recommend, if you're playing Rhodes, take these guys as your missile unit options. Very nice indeed. Now let's have a look at the last of the missile boyos. The uh, Greek Peltas over here. And we've seen these guys many times before as well. Looking very nice. Got their nice little shields. I love the flower on those shields. Looking cool 
indeed. And these guys, you can see, they have a bit of extra armor. They've got that helm, that two armor here. 18 defense skill and a small shield of three. Uh, of course, morale of 12 is fantastic for a missile unit. 10 melee attack. Nine missile attack with those Javis. So these guys, you definitely want to take them over the Akontistai. Because in general, they're going to survive a lot longer uh, during the battle. They're not going to rout at the sound of the enemy rather than <laughs> your Akontistai. Which will just smell the enemy horses and start sprinting off the battlefield. These guys are going to stick in there for a long time. And a melee attack of 10 for a Javi unit is not anything to sniff at. It is fine. They're not going to, you know, be beating Hoplites in one-on-one -on -one, uh, combat. But if you remember from a couple of videos ago, I think it was the Aetolian League. Um, we actually used Greek Peltas, uh, and they were fighting Epibartai. Not Epibartai, so Epilectoi. And they held the line for a long time. So that 12 morale does really, really help them out it is a um yeah a really good stat and you know like i said in that video these greek peltas actually do make me want to take uh some javi units in my armies sadly not quite enough to take a load of them but yeah they do want make me want to take some javi units in my armies which if it can convert me to taking javi units you know shows that it is a really solid strong unit i love that shield look at that that is fantastic princess fiona out of shrek there Looking very nice indeed. Uh, right, let's move on to the infantry boys. Yes, and we have three units of infantry. Very standard Greek infantry apart from one. So we've got the standard Theroporoi. Looking very nice. And I've just got to say, I've got to say every, every single time we do one of these videos, how stunning do the units look in this mod they look absolutely beautiful the art team has done such a fantastic job in this game in this mod so good and you've got to remember this is on an engine that is 20 odd years old 20 i, I can't remember nearly 20 years old i would say yeah i, I think rome one was 2004 so nearly 20 years old <laughs> wow they look so so good don't they Absolutely fantastic. And we always talk about these little details that you're never going to see when you're playing a battle. But they're still there nonetheless. And that just shows the care that goes into this mod. Fantastic. So let's talk about the Theroporoi. 14 morale, 34 defense. 12 melee attack and a missile attack of 14 with two Javis, of course. Um, 6 armor, 6 shield and a 22 defense skill. The standard, uh, pretty much the standard stats for most of the Roparoi that we see. So, solid early game unit. Going to do a decent job of holding the line for the rest of your army to get into the fight. Or if you're playing Rhodes, like you should do. Using these boys to fire into the back of the enemy. <laughs> yes! <laughs> that, is, uh, that is the way I think, you know, that is the most effective way of playing Rhodes. It's going to be hard to micro that, but yeah. That is fantastic. Right, on to the Rhodian Hoplites. And again... Look at these boys, looking very nice indeed, ready to fight the battle. And the shields, look how good the shields look. Absolutely beautiful, fantastic. But let's talk about the Rhodian Hoplites. Standard Hoplites stats, 38 defense. In fact, that is slightly more than most Hoplites, I would say. I think most Hoplites is a 36 defense. And I believe that extra comes in an extra two shield for these Massive Aspis shields they're holding. Large Aspis shields. Very nice indeed. 22 defense skill. 8 armor. They're going to do well against Javis against missiles. Because of that um, armor and shield stat. And they're also going to do decently in melee. With the 13 morale. 13 melee attack. Of course, when you're playing as Rhodes guys. These guys are going to be the backbone of your army for quite a while. Into the late game. So when you get towards the late game. You're going to be wanting to mix in you know, more elite mercenaries. Or at least have these guys, you know, with a lot of experience so that they can fight against the elite units of other nations. But like we've said, the real strength of Rhodes is in the Navy. So let's move on to the special unit, the Epibartes. The Epibartes, the Epibartes, yes, very nice. And we have some plumage going on some very nice plumage i don't believe there's any capage with these guys no no capage but they do have the plumage 
And that is an enjoyable view of the plumage there. Very nice indeed. Um, fantastic. Right. And they have some large Aspis shields as well. Now, let's talk about the stats of these guys. The 14 morale. Really decent amount of morale there for a unit that's not necessarily an elite unit, but on the way, a mid-tier unit. 11 melee attack, which is fine, um, because these guys have a sword. And like we've talked about many times before, swords do better against spearmen. And most of the enemies you're going to be fighting in the Hellenistic area that you're in, in the Aegean and onto Anatolia, are going to be fielding mainly spear-wielding infantry. So these guys are going to do better, even though it looks like it's quite a low melee attack of 11. You know, it's going to be better than probably the Theroporoi's 12 and the uh, Rhodian Hoplites 13 melee attack. Just because of the fact that they're using swords. And they are really cool swords as well. Look at the curved uh, nature of those boyos. Very menacing looking swords. And of course, along with that, as most marine units, they have a missile attack of 14 with two javis that they can use to shock the enemy. Uh, enemy? I don't even know what that know what that word was then. Enemy before charging into them as well. And they are classed as light infantry guys. So so don't underestimate the power of this little bit of move uh, bit of uh, writing here and this bit here. Very good stamina and fast moving. So these guys are not going to get tired easily at all and they're going to be able to keep up with, you know, say, archers, acontisti, that sort of thing. And when you're fighting heavy infantry, that makes them extremely maneuverable compared to, say, an epilectoi uh, unit or a thoracitai unit. So even though they might not be as strong as an epilectoi or a thoracitai unit, they might be able to outmaneuver it. And when you're talking about fighting phalangites, like the Macedonians, like the Achaean League, these guys are going to be able to run rings around them. So don't underestimate that power in the very good stamina and the fast moving uh, stat there. It is very, very, very good. Um, and it will allow you to maneuver these guys a lot quicker than, say, heavy infantry of other factions. So I really like that addition in there as well. So like we said, 14 melee, you know, uh, 14 morale. They're going to stick in the fight for quite a while. The defense isn't so high, a 32 defense as a lot of other units, but that is because they are light infantry. But I love the look of these guys, and it really does make the Rhodes roster feel, um, you know, uh, a lot fuller with these guys in there, and a, uh, a lot more special, really, because you don't really... I don't think we believe we've seen these guys before. Maybe for, you know, some of the other Anatolian factions. We might have seen them before, but I can't remember. So, really nice unit. And again, look at the shields. Absolutely fantastic. A lot of, uh, um, you know, uh, maritime, uh, maritime themes with the shields there. So, very cool indeed. Reinforcing the fact that they are Marines. I love those guys. I really do love that unit. So, let's talk about the cavalry. So, we have our General's Bodyguard. We've seen that many times before. And like I've said, uh, a lot of, in every single video, pretty much, <laughs> use these guys to charge in because they have such good charge. 47 charge, 34 defense, 15 of which is armor, and a defense skill of 19. The morale of 18 is great with a melee attack of 14, which is also fantastic. So, these guys are going to do some decent damage in melee nonetheless, but... You know, ideally, you want to be utilizing that 47 charge as much as possible. Very nice. Very nice indeed. And then we have our Prodromoi guys. Prodromoi. 12 defense, 9 morale. Melee attack of 10 and a missile attack of 9. And like we've seen, these guys can actually do okay in melee uh, when you charge them in and run them out quickly. Uh, but yeah, that defense means that you cannot get these guys into either missile fire or... Or extended melee. They will not survive long in extended melee. Especially against infantry. Because their hitboxes are so big guys. In case you didn't know. All the units that have that are larger than an infantry unit. Think about how big that hitbox is. And how many times they're going to be hit. Including elephants. Including chariots. So ideally with that low defense. You don't want them in extended melee with anyone. 
Never mind infantry. So keep them out of extended melee. But that charge can do decent damage. And, you know, they do decent damage with their uh, javis as well. So let's talk about the reform unit. We have we have the Aspido Foroi over here. The Aspis shields on show as well again. And the nice crossbar there across the shields. And they're, they're um, you know, flat. Whereas if we look at, say, the Aspis shield over here... You can see that it's domed, it's curved. These shields over here are actually flat, and I don't think we have seen this style of shield yet. So a brand new style of shield to showcase to you guys. Very nice indeed, looking really cool. I love those bars across there, just adds that extra little bit of detail onto the units. Uh, and like I said, they are reform units for now. They are changing a few of the reforms up and mixing them around a little bit, so... You know, there might be, uh, you know, some different reform units in here in the future. But for now, this is the reform unit that you get hold of. The Aspido Foroi, which is, uh, you know, the shielded cavalry. And these are your only cavalry option for later game. Like I say, you don't get any early game with the Prodromoi. You get these guys and that's it. So if you are wanting good cavalry... I would recommend going to Larissa and getting the uh, Thales um, Thessalonian Lancers, should I say? The Thessalonian Lancers, easy for me to say. Uh, <laughs> the Aspido Foroi, however, are your late game cavalry option. And they are really good. We've seen them many times before. The missile attack of 10 with 7 Javis. So they fire Javis and they also do really well in melee. That 25 defense is great. 7 armor, 7 shield. 11 defense skill and a charge of 28, as well as 15 morale, guys, and a 12 melee attack. And remember, although they're uh, heavy cavalry, these guys are also fast moving. So when we look at the Rodian roster as a whole, you really have to utilize what you have at your disposal, which is the speed of the roster. Much like we saw with the Aetolian League with their sort of skirmisher-based roster, this is quite similar in the fact that although the Epibarte and the Aspido... Sorry, the uh, um, Epibartes and the Aspido Foroi are melee primary units, their speed and their ability to throw javelins really will help them out to kind of outmaneuver the enemy. And when you're using these guys, you know, holding the line isn't going to work. You're going to have to outmaneuver the enemy with this roster, which I think is fantastic. It forces you into that playstyle, which is really cool indeed. But like I say, a decent solid roster, 12 melee attack. With that 10 missile attack for those 7 Javis, that's really strong and a 60 missile range. And then they even do well in melee as well with the 15 morale, the 25 defense. So a great all-round hybrid unit. I really do like the Aspido Foroi. Right, guys. Well, without further ado, let's get uh, fighting the enemy. So if you don't want to watch the battle, that is absolutely fine. But make sure you do leave a like and subscribe. That would be fantastic. Thank you very much, guys, and uh, thanks to all you guys for watching, if you are going to tune out now. But everyone who wants to watch the battle will get into it now. And we can see we are going to preview, a sneak preview, of uh, the next nation, which is going to be Massalia. A bit of a, uh, a fan favorite and a historian's nightmare. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to come into, uh, into these guys. So, we'll move forward. But, yeah, let's have a little glance over these boys we can see the massalian units going down the hill ready to fight us they've got a bit of a uh, cavalry overload on this flank i've got to say so get there he's going to go for our general's bodyguard i'm going to get them away if i can they're a bit too slow maybe Let's get that javi's firing boys oh they're going to get shredded now absolutely shredded so they're bringing all their cavalry around that side. That's fine. I'm not too bothered about that. I think we hold them in place and try and get the... Th oh, no, they're going. They're going. That's fine. Leave them then. Leave them. Let's get all our boys out of the back into here. Ah, that was, uh, that was a misclick by me. Here they come. Here they come. Turn. Turn, boys. Turn. Let's go. Get you in there. Bring the Prodromoi forward. I'm going to try and charge that Greek General's bodyguard in the back. You guys get out. And yeah, we've got our two units of infantry here to try and hold the line 
against the Massalians. Remember, we're always playing on very hard, guys. You, you, I think, will get there. There we are. I think you'll get him. Good. See if we can get the progeny in there. Like they say, they are fast moving, so that's going to really help out. And uh, bring you forward. And let's bring our Javi boys forward is really the best option here. Bring them forward. There we are. Get into the fight, boys. Get into the fight. So the Aspido 4 I have won out on this side. And like I say, they're a really good hybrid unit, the Aspido 4 You can use them, uh, you know, in, in a variety of cases, which is really cool. Uh, my general's bodyguards actually run. So our Thoroperoi here are going to be fighting the Thorakitai. And that is not something, you know, that's really something we want. The Thorakitai will shred them. And we've got our Epibartai, though, fighting the General's Bodyguard as well as... Ah, yes, they're fighting the Infantry Bodyguard of the uh, uh, Massalians over here, which are a really, really strong infantry unit. So let's get into them. Ideally, don't want you to die out here, my friend. We need you to charge into the back of the enemy. So keep firing your Javis, boys. Keep firing them. And we've got our two Slingers. Oh, I brought the Rodian Slingers forward by accident. Oh, well, they're, they're a decent unit. They'll do, they'll do some good damage. Let's get you into there and you into there. Try and chase down the enemy. Then we can charge them in the back. I don't think it'll be too hard to break these guys in the middle. Let's see if we can chuck another Javi. Uh, ideally, if we could get these guys around and firing into the back of these fools, that would be good. Okay, yep, get into the Yuzono boys. Come on, the Yuzono are a little bit stronger, but they shouldn't be so strong that we have a problem with them. I think, I know, you know, yeah, I was going to say, I believe these guys are going to come back, so we'll charge them. Uh, just halt, boys, just halt. Just halt for now. Oh, you can go and try and fit through that gap. That'd be great. How are we doing over here? They're running away. But like I say, because these guys are both fast moving, they should have a good uh, ability to, to, to catch up to them. And I don't think it'll take much for the Greek Slingers to run, like we've seen many times before. So quickly into the Akontisti then, boys. Let's go. I'm just hoping we can hold the line for long enough down in the center down there so we can get our cavalry back in time. They should all be routing now. And I don't think they'll come back now because we've killed so many of them. Get those Greek archers. They should be broken now. Into the back of those. Uh, yeah, we've got our slingers out here. I mean, you can fire at them if you want. That's fine. Uh, if you guys could come through... Uh, we'll go this way. How are the Epibates? The Epibates are doing really, really well. And they are fighting this Maso... Uh, Massalian General's Bodyguard... Yeah, and you guys have held the line for long enough. Quite nice. I, I'm, I'm happy for you to get a bit of friendly fire if you want to charge them in the back. Okay, they've got, done them. Let's get rid of these guys. Now let's fire into the back of them. Let's see how much we can shred these guys with our uh, with our slingers. Although the, uh, the archers are charging. Go on, the boys. Let's go. So they were in 33 before. Oh. Let's see if we can see any, uh, you know, missiles going into them. They're about to fire now. There we are. Oh, shredding them. Nice, nice, nice. Good. Now let's... Ah, my general's died. That's going to... Yeah, that's a big morale shock. That's a big, big morale shock. So if we got our Greek Peltas over here, let's see if they can hold the line for long enough. Get in there. They have a lot of infantry left, don't they? But we've got the cavalry. If we can kill their general's bodyguard, that'd be really helpful. So let's get in there. Let's see whether we can fire at that Thorakitai. Really strong unit. If we could kill their general, that'll help us immeasurably. Oh, that was brutal. Absolutely brutal. Ooh, look at our, our guys just ran. Right, we're going to have to rely on our marines. The marine boys. Let's go. Fire at them. Yeah, all of our sort of uh, units in the back are, char are routing, running away. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure you're going to be able to stand up to the Thorakitai, but let's see this. This uh, 
this volley. <sighs> oh, that's going to be bad. That is not going to be good. I think, yeah, we need to take these guys out one by one. Who are you? You're the Massaliat Epibati, so you're, uh, you're Marines as well. So let's have a go at them. They're light infantry, so... Oh, God. The Thorakitai just shredded us. Let's go for these guys, then, while they're, where they're running away. Anyone that's not... Yes, that's good. Right, the Marines, they are going to come through for some serious... Seriously clutch here if they do. They're going to run straight away once they get charged, I believe. Yeah. So let's see if we can charge that Thorakitai in the back before we start running. No, we've started running. But let's go for the charge anyway. Because they're out of formation. Just didn't do that much damage. The Thorakitai is strong. Strong boys. Really strong boys. Let's go for the Epibartite. Ah, no. Prodromoy's gone. They do have low morale. No, my Marines. My glorious Marines. Marine on Marine action. And we lost. They have been fighting their general's bodyguard for so long, though. Come on. Run through them and charge them. Ah, we're, we're done for. We're done for. We're done for. No. They're just firing into the enemy there. Nice. I like that. Yeah, fire at them. No, run. Fire at them. And then we'll charge them again. Go for the charge. Yeah. I, <laughs> you know, these Peltas are not going to hold out that long. Well, that's our Prodromoid. We might have an option here, then. And get those slingers. Fire into there. Prodromoy come back. They're running away. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll concentrate on the action up here. My marines have come back as well. Let's go for the charge. Oh, our guys just died right at the wrong moment. Our Prodromoy's gone. This is a scrap and a half. Who can you... If you can fire at them, that'd be fantastic. You've got a bit of high advantage, so that should help. Okay. That's just their Theroporoi. Their standard Theroporoi. I don't think... You know, they're already wavering because they're very tired. Uh, unhappy overtaking casualties. If we can help that along a little bit with a nice charge, I think, uh, you know, that'd be very helpful. All our guys are absolutely knackered now, though. We've got a Greek general's bodyguard that's come back. Let's charge, then. Charge, boys! Fatal charge! Against the Theroporoi. Not the greatest charge in the world, but it did break them getting charged in the back. Nice. Yeah, fire at them. All right, you boys. Let's get you into the uh, Thorakitai over there. Right, and we are going to have to try and charge them from some direction. I think it'll be up here. If we can get charged down the hill, that would be so helpful. Remember, we are playing on hard, guys. So, um, you know, they actually had one more unit than us at the start of this. Uh, yeah. And the uh, the Thorakitai down here. Let's see where we can smash them now. Let's go. Let's go for it, boys. Let's go. Nice. Right in the back of them. As long as they're turned, should be a good charge. Good. They're all knackered, so the charge is just not powerful. A wavering. I was hoping we could stick in there a little bit longer just so that they would route, but let's get out and go for the second charge. They're so tired. My poor boys. I know this has been a scrap, but you can do it. Come on. Come on, boys. Final charge. They're shaken. That should really hamper them. Yes, come on. Nice. One of these guys, Slingers. Okay, we've got a little bit of action down here. We've got our Slingers versus their Marines. Our Slingers have just gone. Ah, ah, well. <laughs> we've got our Marines now, though. Let's just... Uh, they're, they're, they're too busy celebrating. They won't, uh, they won't accept my orders. Come on, boys. You've not won yet. You've not won yet. It's close. But not yet. Not quite yet. <laughs> The Marines are coming in loose formation as well. I'm not quite sure why. Let's 
So we'll have to charge them in the back once they've charged. Here they come. Come on, boys. You need to show that you are the true, the real Marines. The proper Marines. Not some fake Massalian Marines. Oh. That Akontisti routing is not going to help one bit. Nice little volley from the uh, slingers out the back. Yes! Come on, fighting to the death, though. We need to get out. Oof, brutal. I did not think we were going to win that. <laughs> nice. Let's see the casualties. The Progemoy did 257. Aspido 4, 311. How did the um, Epibartis do? It says 66, which doesn't seem like a lot. But I think, uh, you know... They, uh, you know, they were fighting the general's bodyguard for a long time, and that, they're pretty hard to kill one of those, so fantastic, good, nice one, and yeah, you can see the Rhodian Sling is just doing a little bit more damage than the Greek Sling is there as well, so nice, fantastic, well guys, I think that's going to be it for today, so thank you very much for watching, please like and subscribe, it really does help the channel out, and I will see you all again on the next video.